back over the past five years. Hallelujah, the past 10 years. My God, I can actually say the past 50 years. That's something else. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can declare that God has been good to me. And I'm sure you've got that same testimony today. That God has been. Somebody shout good. him today. I don't want it to be a secret of what God has done. Hallelujah. He has been good to us. Thank you, Lord God. Some of y'all might be saying, well, how do you know he's been good to me? You ain't in my shoes. But I'm saying he's been good to you because you are in your shoes. That's how I know, hallelujah, that God has been good to you because you can stand on your feet. Come on, somebody. In your shoes. In your shoes. In your situation. With your problems. With your good. You can still declare that God has been good. Come on, do I have a witness today? That God has been good to me. Amen. I don't want it to be a secret today. Amen. Because, you know, many people are hesitant, amen, to give God the glory. I mean, it's easy when we in church amongst the other saints of God. Amen. But when you come on, when you're by, do, does anybody praise God when they're all by themselves? Oh, that's that 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 that's my that's my favorite time. You know, the Bible the Bible often criticizes people that like to just show off in front of other people. You know, he talks about those ones that like to get on the corner and start screaming and hollering and declaring things that they ain't living. Let me say that again. Not just declaring the word, but I'm talking about declaring stuff that they ain't even living. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Lord God. You know, it, it, it's when you're by yourself, when you're in your own prayer closet. Amen. That's when you know that you can declare the works of the Lord. When nobody else is watching. Come on, somebody. Amen. We are not here. We don't come to be seen. Amen. We come to come together to gather in his name and worship him. Because he deserves to be worshipped. He deserves to be praised. Amen. We want to get to the word of God this morning. Amen. We are on a series, amen, that the Lord had us to start on last week. Kind of gave you an introduction to it, amen. And we were talking about the gift. Somebody say the gift. Yeah. Amen. And we were talking about, amen, the gift that God has given us, amen, which are, which are the blessings of God, amen, that he gives us so often every day we receive. Can anybody uh, agree with me that we receive new blessings every day? Come on, I mean just the gift of breath. Come on, the gift of life. Amen. The gift of a right mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, some of y'all got to think about that one. Amen. Hallelujah. The gift of a right mind. Somebody say a right mind. Hallelujah. Because you ain't always guaranteed to have a right mind. Amen. I believe the people of God got the right mind. Hallelujah, because we have learned to acknowledge God in all our ways so that he can give us direction. Amen. Come on, before we go any further, let's just have a word of prayer. Father God, we just want to thank you for the gathering of your children in this house today. 
God, this last Sunday of 2023, God, we just want to say thank you for being a keeper. Thank you that you're opening up our ears right now. You're preparing our hearts to be good ground, that it will receive all that the Holy Ghost has to say to us today. Father, I ask your God to speak through me in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, speak through me. Oh God, let it not be my opinion, but let it be the word of God that is able to change, that is able to heal, that is able to deliver. Oh God, prepare us to receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all God's people say amen and amen. Before I go any further, I just want to say I thank God for you. Hello somebody, I say I thank God for you. Come on, give yourselves a hand clap in the house of praise today. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen. Getting back to the word of God, we started this series talking about the gift. Amen. And on last week, we were talking about how the gifts of God, amen, the blessings of God, how when they come to us, amen, full assembly is required. So in other words, it don't all come all together fixed and ready for you to just go and just do. Amen. amen. A lot of times these things have to be worked out and worked on before we get the fullness of it. Amen. But I was saying the thing that we ought to be most appreciative of when we get our gift from God, the most important thing is what? The instructions. Somebody say the instructions. The instructions are the most valuable thing. It is the best thing that comes in your gift. Because if you don't have the instructions, you don't know what to use it for. Am I right? You don't know how to put it together. You don't know where it fits. You don't know how to, come on. You don't know what to do with it. If you don't follow the instructions, it becomes stuff. Come on, somebody. It just becomes stuff. You, 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 you. I told you, amen, and I got some confirmation this week from some of y'all. Amen, they got children and had to put some stuff together for Christmas. I told you how many times, amen, especially as men, amen, we are so quick to just look at the picture and try to put it together. Instead of following the instruction that comes with that gift. Hallelujah. So today, amen, we're going to just kind of take a little turn off of that, amen, and we're going to talk about another gift. Somebody say power. Ah, uh, come on, you can do better than that. Somebody say power. power. Amen. And we're talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many know that's the gift that you need? Thank you, Lord God. The power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord God. When I look at this word power, thank you, Lord God. What is power? Amen. I, 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 the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1. Go to Acts chapter 1 and 8. This is Jesus speaking. Amen. And this is the gift that he has given us. The Bible says here, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. And when I was looking at this word power, amen, a lot of us, when we usually think about power, we think about like some type of electricity or something to cause you to go. Amen. But the Lord uh, gave me something different about this word power. Because we have a saying in this land that knowledge is power. Hello, somebody? Somebody say knowledge is power. And when I started to look at the scripture, amen, and I started to look at the move of the Holy Ghost throughout the book of Acts, amen, I, I started to think about what did they really receive? We know that uh, through the book of Acts that they were able to do a lot of the things that Jesus did throughout his ministry as far as healing the sick, right? As far as, as the different miracles that, 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 we, uh, that we are familiar with. Amen. But when I started to look at the scripture and I started to look at that power, amen, the, the, the Lord took me a little further and, and he was saying, amen, that first of all, 
Amen. The, the scripture says, Amen. That 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 when 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 the power came on them, it gave them the power to speak. Hello, and it gave them the power to understand who Jesus really was when no one else could understand. So as you go through the book of Acts, you will see, amen, that in that book of Acts, amen, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they were able to speak the oracles of the Lord. Somehow they just got this knowledge. They got this power of knowledge to know who they were in Christ Jesus and who the people that they were speaking to could be in Christ Jesus. The Bible says over in John, excuse me here, in John chapter 1, hallelujah, John chapter 1, I believe we're going to verse 11. The Bible says here, it says he came, talking about Jesus, he came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave what? He gave them power. Power to do what? Power to become the sons of God. That means the children of God. Even to them that believed on his name. Hallelujah. So what is that telling us, amen, that in order to be saved, you got to have the power. God has to give you Holy Ghost power to walk this walk that God has purposed you to walk. You cannot do it on your own. Some of us, we think that it stops at the altar when we say, Lord, I accept you as my savior. It's, tell somebody it's more to it than that. You need the power of the Holy Ghost to maintain your walk. Some of us, we're wondering, Lord, I came to you and I told you I wanted you to be my Savior, but yet I still have all these struggles. I still got all these issues. Maybe you got up too quick. Maybe you need to learn how to stay on your knees until you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. See, I know for me, it took me having an encounter with God. We had a conversation, come on somebody, and it wasn't a one-way conversation. When is the last time you allowed the Lord to speak to your heart instead of you just giving him all your requests? I know the Bible tells us to make our requests made known unto him, but sometimes you got to learn how to hush and allow the Lord to speak to your heart. Hallelujah. We just go to God with our honey-do list. And the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy, he says, study. Study to show yourself approved. Hallelujah. This is how God speaks to us. Listen, I know that there were some things, amen, in the word of God. I read it and I just didn't understand. Hallelujah. Come on, am I right? But the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that if you want wisdom, he will give it to you liberally. The Bible tells that the Holy Ghost will lead us into all truths. The Bible says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth this power is knowledge this power is knowledge you know what it's the knowledge of it's the knowledge of knowing your rights in the kingdom a lot of us amen we go without because we haven't studied we haven't received the word some of us has heard it but we haven't received the word of what you are entitled to according to the kingdom. Thank you, Lord God. And we know, amen, that when you know your rights, amen, in the kingdom, and when you know, see, anybody can take advantage of you if you don't know your rights. Hello, somebody. Even here on this earthly realm, 
if you don't know your rights, you can be easily taken advantage of. Hallelujah. So you got to understand that in the kingdom, you have the right to be healed. You have the right to be delivered. And you have the right to be made free. Tell somebody that's your right. Come on, say it again. That's your right. But if you don't know it, the enemy will mess with you every time. He'll come against you. He'll mess with your mind. He'll tell you, you don't deserve to be blessed. You don't deserve to be blessed. You don't deserve to be healed. But you'll have to know that it's not according to me, but it's according to the word. The word says that I'm blessed. The word says that I'm healed. The word says that I've been made free. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what men have to say. Hallelujah. God is so good sometimes, y'all, that even when we even when it comes to ourselves, our opinion don't even matter. Oh God, because some of us we think so little of ourselves because we judge ourselves and we start saying, you know what, I don't know if I deserve this blessing. Oh, but thank God he looks past our faults and he sees our needs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Because if our blessings was attached to our attitudes, my God, we would have nothing. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Who is arguing our case before the throne of God. And he's saying, my blood, my blood. My, I paid for that. Come on, somebody say he paid for that. Thank you, Lord God. So he made the undeserving deserving. He made the unlovable lovable. Come on, somebody. I ain't talking about those in the street. I'm talking about us right here. Thank you, Lord God. Paul said at one time we all had our conversations in times past. In other words, those people that you talk about, you was just like them. Hallelujah. When we look at our children, come on, y'all. I look at them and say, man, that boy was just like me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. And if he did it for me, he can do it for my children. He can do it for your children. There were things in our lives that people knew. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord God. Thank God that we ain't got to tell all our testimony. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody say, stick with the good part. <laughs> right, stick with the good part. But sometimes the Lord will lead you because in order to appreciate the good, sometimes you got to tell that bad thing. Come on, somebody. But that's when you know you've been delivered. Come on, that's when you know you've been made free. When you can talk about that stinky thing. That bad thing. But you can end with a testimony of victory. Anybody got the victory this morning? Come on, anybody got the victory this morning? Anybody got the victory this morning? Hallelujah. I can be a witness that I don't look like what I've been through. Hallelujah. Songwriter say, you don't know my story. You don't know my pain. But what you need to know is that God has been good to me. And you need that knowledge. You need to know that God is good. You need to know that you got to acknowledge him. Because that knowledge is power. Tell somebody it's power. It's powerful. That's a gift from God. Thank you, Lord God. That's a gift from him. 
to know that it was him and that it took his blood. It took his sacrifice. See, some people just think they got here by chance. They think that just is, it just happened. It didn't just happen. Jesus happened. Hey, I said Jesus happened. This is why we can stand here today. Because we have the knowledge of God. That he happened. Somebody say he happened. He happened to me. Thank you Lord God. Thank you Jesus. Mm, I want to get to this scripture. Thank you Lord God. Acts chapter 10 verse we going verse 38 mm. this is the man of God preaching here he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what the Holy Ghost and with come on the Holy Ghost and tell somebody that's what you need Come on, if Jesus had it, you sure enough need it. Jesus told us that we were going to do greater works. So if it took him having the Holy Ghost and power, how much more, come on, him being the Son of God, him being Emmanuel, God with us, how much more do we need it? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. God was with him. Do you believe that God is with you? These are the things that the enemy are trying to block from your mind. Trying to cancel out of your life. Because he wants you to pay more attention to your situation. And what you may be going through. That's why I told you, that's why I'm kind of, I'm working on changing my language. When I talk about going through. I told you last week, I, 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 and it ain't no New Year's resolution. It's a life resolution. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I believe in life-changing word. Not a word just for the day, but a word for life. And last week, amen, the Lord gave me that. He said, I'm not going through. I'm growing through. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'm growing through this. Because I refuse to go through this hell and not learn something. So that I don't have to go back through it again. Come on, anybody with me? I, 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 I don't want to repeat my mistakes. I don't want to have to keep going through. I'd rather go, grow through it. So that I know I'm bigger. See, now I know that I'm bigger and better because I got Jesus on my side. And see, some of us, I'm telling you, it's not just about studying the word, but it's about studying your life and seeing where the word fits in your life. You're talking about study to show yourself approved? See, some of y'all, y'all get too bored with just the Bible. Come on. You get bored with just reading the Bible. You, you, you tell them, I, I ain't got there yet. I, I, I'm not there yet. I, I can't, I, you know, these, these and thous and those. And I, I know they came out with so many. They got so many versions now. Be, be careful. Be careful. But listen, I've learned that the word will come alive when you apply it to your life. When you apply it to yourself. 
See, some of us, we good at looking up scripture for somebody else. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. When you want to point out their sin, those scriptures will come. Come on, you ain't got no problem quoting them. But when you going through, I ain't say growing through, I say when you going through. All of a sudden we get those word aneurysms. That word just bleed out. We, we done forgot all that the scripture has to say about it. But let me tell you something. When you learn how to study the word, the Holy Ghost, the Bible tells the Holy Ghost will bring it back. That's why it's so important. He will bring it back to your remembrance. Listen, I've even had the experience of I don't even remember when I learned the scripture. I don't even know where the scripture came from. I must have been sitting in somebody's church. That's why it's good to come to the house of the Lord. Sometimes you hear stuff and it seemed like it went out, went in one ear and out the other, but the Lord knows how to drop it in your heart. Cause the Bible tells us he'll know when you have need of it. Come on somebody. Sometimes the word will come to me, a word of deliverance. And I'll be like, man, that's good. But I don't stop there. I go and I start to search the scripture. I need to make sure that that word that came to me is backed up in the word of. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, don't take their word for it. Don't take their word for it. Take the word for it. Come on, will you say that with me again? Don't take their word for it. Take the word for it. Because the, the word will deliver you. And it will bring you out of whatever you will find yourself in. Thank you, Lord God. You have the right to be delivered. You have the right to be healed. And you have the right to be free. Do you believe that today? Thank you, Lord God. No, you don't have to put up with it. Come on, will you get that in your spirit today? Somebody repeat that. I don't have to put up with it. Hallelujah. If it goes contrary to the word of God, Come on, if it goes contrary to the word of God, I have a right to expect God to move on my behalf. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's a scripture. Ah, where is it? John. John 8. Thank you, Lord God. Mm. I'm going to go to 32. John 8 and 32. The Bible says what? And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall what? Make. I, 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 know, I know I jump on your case a lot about this scripture. Because I know it's so quick. We just learned it in Sunday school. But we learned it incorrectly. The truth won't set you free. It'll make you free. Tell somebody it'll make you free. See, when you get enough of the truth, even though you're in your ignorant state. Come on, somebody. Anybody? Come on now. We, listen, when you're in sin, you're in an ignorant state. But if you keep sitting under the truth, if you keep receiving the truth of God, after a while, after a while, after a while, Your flesh is going to have to line up with the word of God. And your flesh will always be stubborn. I'm here to tell you, flesh ain't going to be saved. Because my Bible says your flesh can't inherit the kingdom. Cannot. It's your spirit. Your flesh is going to be unruly. Your tongue is going to be unruly. But the Bible says the truth 
will make tell somebody you got to be made you got to be made free hallelujah you got to be made free see when you're made free that means somebody had to do it for you hallelujah somebody say Lord do it for me Lord do it for me what did Jesus say about the truth he said I am the way come on somebody I am the truth So when you're talking about the truth, you're talking about Jesus. Jesus. This scripture right here is saying Jesus will make you free. This is what studying to show yourself approved. Tell somebody, you got to learn how to tie the scripture together. If Jesus said he's the truth, John is over here talking about the truth. He must be talking about Jesus. Tell somebody he's got to be talking. He's got to be. He's got to be referencing Jesus. Knowledge is power. See, with no knowledge, with no Holy Ghost wisdom, you're going to think they're just talking about an earthly truth. But the Holy Ghost will give you the insight. I prayed that last week, didn't I? that the Lord will give you Holy Ghost insight. Did you receive that? That he will give you Holy Ghost insight so that you can see the intricacies of the word of God. Do you understand that Jesus had an inner crowd that the masses didn't understand so he talked in parable? But he made it plain to those, come on, that were ready for the truth. Jesus will make you free the bible says here amen we're gonna read it i was gonna skip over but we're gonna read this thing and i'll be done this is my last scripture it says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free they answered him they said we are abraham's seed come on these are self-righteous folk and we, 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 we were never in bondage to any man. Now we know that that is contrary. They got to go right back to their own history to see that they were in bondage multiple, multiple times. Says here, we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? But you know what? They had the same mentality. This is just the same mentality that when we're in the world that we have. Because we can't even see that we're in bondage. We, we think we're having fun. Come on, somebody. We, we think we we think we, oh, I'm, I'm good. Somebody, I know, I remember. Now, you got to understand, I was born here. I was born in church. All right. Somebody will come by and give me a track. I'm good. How many been there? I'm, I'm good. Uh, uh, can, I, can I talk to you about the Lord now? I'm, I'm good. They, they think they're good. They ain't good. They're on their way to hell. And they don't even know it. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to be free. That's why we so quick to judge these folk and say, they stupid. Don't they understand that God brought them out of Egypt? Did they forget their history? Did they forget where God brought them from being under the hand of the Philistine? Did they remember? Do they remember? And my question to you today is, do you remember? Do you understand that you have a need for God in your life? Do you remember when you couldn't see your way out and you said, Lord... Lord, get me out of this one. I, I don't, I, you know, many times I'm always reminded of, I don't know if I should quote him, Richard Pryor. He, he had a Richard Pryor uh, a special. And he said, he said, Lord, if you get me out of this one, I get out of the next one all by myself. Stupid. 
Stupid situation, stupid statement. Hallelujah. But that's how we work when you don't have the mind of Christ. That's why I said waking up in your right mind. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, I can say with a guarantee that there has been a day in your life before you accepted Jesus Christ for sure that you didn't wake up in your right mind because you didn't get up and say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for keeping me another day. Lord, I'm asking you before I leave this house, God, that you order my steps according to your word. Come on, tell somebody that used to be me. Oh, but now I've learned, I've learned how to acknowledge God in all my ways so that he can direct my path. He said, how sad that ye shall be made free. Jesus answered them and said, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Ain't no way around that one. I want to make you feel good. I want to make you feel good. I want to say, honey, it's going to be all right. But the Bible says if you're living in sin, you're a servant of sin. I can't pretty that one up for you. I can't pretty it up for you. That's just the way it is. The truth, Jesus will make you free. And that's the problem today. We want to get you sugar-coated word. We want to pretty it up for you. Oh, honey, you just keep trying. Keep, keep trying. It's, it's going to work out after a while. No, the Bible says you got to change your ways. Let your mind be renewed. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you. And that mind that was in Christ Jesus means that the Bible is right. And somebody else is wrong. Hallelujah. It says here, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. Talking about Jesus. And then here's the pretty part. If the son therefore shall do what? make you free I told you it's Jesus when he talks about the truth he's talking about himself if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed in other words when Jesus does it ain't nothing the devil can do about it Come on, anybody got a praise on that one? Come on, stand to your feet with me. We're done. Hallelujah. Somebody thank God for freedom today. Somebody declare today that I'm free in Jesus' name. Come on, say it again. I'm free. I'm free in Jesus' name. God has done it. God has done it. God has done it. And I want it to be everybody's testimony in this place today. That I'm free. I want it so bad for it to be everybody's testimony. got good news for you if it's not it can be right now come on anybody got a praise on that one so let me explain something to you you don't have to be discouraged because we talked about and pointed out the sin that you might be living in you don't have to be upset with the preacher today that we were talking about you because it's a good thing to find yourself in the word of God because you know what it means when you find yourself in the word of God and you know that you're living contrary that means that today is your day of change 
That means that today is your day of the turnaround. And you don't have to leave here the same way you came. In Jesus' name. Song says you don't have to be broken hearted, disappointed, sick or lame. Because the power of the Lord. Oh, there's that word power. The power of the Lord is still the same. So don't you dare leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Don't you leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Broken hearted, disappointed, sick or lame for the power of the Lord is still the same. you today I believe that Jesus is making you free right now come on the shackles are coming off come on the things that's holding you back from coming to this altar today they're breaking off right now come on somebody shake yourself right now in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare freedom today over each and every one that's here under the sound of the voice of the Holy Ghost. I decree and declare freedom. Shackles are being broken. Chains are being broken. Yokes are being destroyed. Come on, if you want to come to this altar, come right now. Don't think about it. Just come on, come on, come on. Come, come, come. Come on. to come as you oh. come on we got more over here in the name of Jesus where's my evangelist come on up my ministers come on up in the name of Jesus God bless you son thank you Lord God come on preachers I need prayer I need prayer today hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is a day of change. Today is a day that God is going to uh, 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 renew his covenant with you. Thank you, Lord God. Do it in Jesus' name. Some of you might be online today. It may not be in the house. God will touch you where you are. He wants you to make this commitment to him today. Maybe you still might be in your seat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. You got to understand that this walk is a walk of liberty. It's a walk of freedom. Every step that you take, I feel the devil just getting off of you. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you another minute. I'm going to give you another minute. Come on up to the altar. Thank you, Lord God. God, we need you today. Come on, come on. Thank you, Lord God. Right here, right here. Thank you, Lord God. Come on, somebody give God a praise today. Brother Solomon, over here. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, real quickly. Quickly. I want you to repeat. I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Repeat this prayer with me. And through this prayer, you're asking God for his forgiveness. 
Through this prayer, you're asking God to make you free. Through this prayer, you're asking God to give you the mind of Christ, give you clarity over your life. And I believe that when you ask, the Bible says he will do it for you. This is what the word of God says. So come on, repeat this prayer and say, Lord God, I come to you today just as I am asking you to forgive me of all of my sins and all of my shortcomings. Today, I believe is my day to know you in the pardon of my sins. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for delivering me and I thank you for making me free. Somebody shout freedom. I thank you for making me free. And I decree and declare that with your help, I will live godly for the rest of my life in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, lift your hands and praise him now. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for my son, God. Continue to bless him and keep him.